Okay, that's easy. This video was brought to you by my website, everparts.com, high quality, genuine parts. In this video, I'm going to be diagnosing a code P2187 and P2189, which means air fuel mixture ratio is too lean while the vehicle is at idle. The vehicle in question here is a 2006 Cadillac STS with the 3.6 liter V6 LY7 motor, which is used in a range of GM vehicles. In a previous video, which I will link below, I replaced the right hand rear post catalytic converter oxygen sensor and I also replaced the left rear oxygen sensor because they should be replaced in pairs. This was done because the right rear sensor just wasn't functioning. But we did end up with these two new codes shortly after. Now my first instinct was to just replace the front oxygen sensors because why not? This issue came about because I changed the rear oxygen sensors in pairs and maybe changing the front ones would fix this issue, but I don't want to fire up the parts cannon. So in this video, I'm going to be diagnosing this problem and I'm going to be sharing with you the tools that I'm going to be using for this job. Now these are not beginner tools, but they're also not pro tools either. They don't cost thousands of dollars. You can get them for a reasonable amount. All we need is a scanner that can pull live data, fuel trim specifically. These can be found under $100. And we need a smoke machine, which can also be found for under $100. If your smoke machine doesn't have the proper attachments to seal the intake, make sure you get those as well. Now I get it. I know a lot of people don't want to spend the money on the tools and they're just here to see what the issue that I had was so they can check their car. I get it. That's why I included the information at the beginning of the video and the links in the description. But my problem may not be the same exact problem that you have, which is why I recommend the tools. Now I'm going to start off with the air filter. This one is extremely dirty. It's hard to properly diagnose anything with an air filter that looks like this. So first step was to change this air filter. It's not really the cause of lean air fuel mixture, but I don't want to really be messing with the car with a dirty filter like that. Now here are our fuel trims. We have short term fuel trim bank one and total fuel trim average, which would be long term fuel trim bank one. Bank two is giving us similar readings just to give you a quick heads up. Now here's a quick rundown on fuel trims. You have to understand this before we go forward here. No, this isn't a scanner den or diagnosis. If you really want an in-depth description of what fuel trims are, I recommend checking out Scanner Danner's channel. He goes very in-depth. and It's a channel that I recommend you check out. Now the best and easiest way I can explain fuel trims to people who don't normally deal with this type of data is that it's almost exactly the same as driving your car straight down a freeway with no turns. You see the goal is to keep your car centered in the lane, but you're never just going to hold your steering wheel in one spot. You're always going to be turning it a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. If your steering wheel is too far to the left or too far to the right, while you're going straight down the road, that indicates that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Fuel trims work in a very similar way where zero would indicate the perfect amount of fuel that needs to be delivered to your engine to run perfectly. Positive values indicate that the computer is delivering more fuel and negative values indicate that the computer is delivering less fuel. So it's perfectly normal, depending on the manufacturer, to see values between negative 10 and 10. Similar to the small steering wheel inputs that you need to keep your vehicle centered in a lane. The oxygen sensors are detecting the air fuel ratio and the computer is constantly adding or taking a little bit of fuel as you drive your vehicle to keep that mixture just right. If you see a value that's outside of that negative 10 and 10 range, that indicates that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. For example, if you have a big hole in your intake and the vehicle engine is taking in more air than the mass airflow sensor told the computer it was taking in, this will be detected by the oxygen sensors and the computer will adjust the fuel amount up to a certain point until the computer is satisfied from the readings that is getting from the oxygen sensors. The computer will also turn the check engine light on because of this, indicating that something is wrong. As you can see here, our current short term fuel trim percentage is 25 and the vehicle is at idle. Watch what happens when I rev the engine up. It does drop. Now the people who skipped the beginning of the video are going to say change the oxygen sensors or change the mass airflow sensor without realizing that the rear oxygen sensors are new 
and the readings from the front sensors don't indicate an issue with the oxygen sensor. As someone who's run an auto parts business for over 10 years, I've lost count of the number of emails and phone calls where people tell me that they've purchased a part for me and it didn't fix their issue. For those that have been on the phone with me and explained the issue that they have with their vehicle, you'll know the same thing that everybody else does and I tell everybody the same thing which is to diagnose it further because I've seen so many people that were unhappy after spending a bunch of money on their car and it didn't fix their issue. I've personally fired the parts cannon off on my personal vehicles many many times before so I know all about this <laughs> okay <laughs> I think that would cause that look at this what why was it left off like that Okay, well, let's put it back on. That's bizarre. Put them back on. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, I want you guys to think a little bit here. Before you go celebrating, why was this PCV hose disconnected? It could have been a mistake, but sometimes people do stuff like this intentionally. Maybe there was a blockage in the pipe that was causing a drivability issue that was temporarily resolved by unplugging it. Sometimes people do stuff like that, so I checked it. There were no blockages and I connected it and I went ahead and proceeded with a smoke test because at this point I really feel like this intake system needs to be thoroughly checked for leaks. Now that this machine is pumping out smoke, let's get it connected and check for leaks. Now check this out, if I would have called it a day after plugging the PCV hose back in, I would have missed all of this. This is the return hose for the vacuum switching valve and all these tears are causing vacuum leaks. It's also leaking from the main intake hose as well. This is a hose torn, it's torn right here too. Now I'm inspecting the intake hose to see if there's any issues with it and I don't see anything wrong with it. So I'm gonna put it back on, tighten it back up, and double check everything to see if I can narrow my problem down to that one evap hose. And check it out, tightening up this one was all that it needed. That resolved that issue and now our last issue is this one evap return hose from the vacuum switching valve but you can see it's still definitely leaking and we need to address this one. Going to be using GM Genuine Equipment. I'm going to put it on the screen. This is not an expensive hose and it's also very easy to change. And that is it. The old crusty crispy hose comes right off and the new one just plugs right in. And the last thing I'm going to do is to check the fuel trims to see if this repair actually resolved the problem. Now check it out, our short term fuel trims are absolutely within the range that we want to see. I'm already hearing from my neighbor that the engine runs way better and the gas mileage is way better as well. We had a discussion and he decided that he didn't want to turn off the check engine light. He wanted it to turn off on its own, which takes several drive cycles. So you'll notice that the long term or average fuel trim number is still going to be high, which is normal. Eventually that number will come down enough and the check engine light will turn off. He's been through a lot and he doesn't drive very often. So it's going to take a while. I will pin a comment down below when it does actually turn off. 
and this issue is finally resolved. If it doesn't, there will be another video, but I'm very confident in this repair because we can see our fuel trims are exactly where they need to be. If this video helped you out and you learned something from this video, give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. And don't forget, if you're looking for high quality, genuine parts, make sure to check out AeroParts.com.